What you doing? I'm going to finish that shopping cart today. Okay. <laughs> and she is right today. I am not going to use that cube. Today, I'm going to finish that shopping cart. So, I have, let me see, file open. Don't save. I've already set it up. I left this off yesterday. And just making the frame, I've got the wheels. I've gone back and looked at some of the uh, references here. And I think I made a couple mistakes. Um, obviously, it's not always... Um, you, you don't always, <laughs> you obviously have to go back and, and do little changes. The wheels in the back are fixed, so they don't have the same swivel type. Uh, that's the same on all of these cards. This one does seem to have a swivel type, but it looks to me like it's welded here instead of having the mechanism that holds it. Um, likewise on the other ones. So, on this in this case, the, the wheel, um, the um, bracket that holds the wheel, is welded on or bolted on to the tubing. So let's see how much I can accomplish today. Um, I am planning to um, go back over here and set everything up over here. I mean, I'm planning to uh, dedicate an hour and a half at most, same as I did yesterday, um, and see how far I can get. And hopefully this will only be a part two. All right, so... Um, to start off here, uh, let me go and make sure that this is working again. I probably have to check that every time and, uh, and start ready to go. So here's where I left off. So to fix what I just talked about right now, I can go into the edit mode for this, deselect everything, make sure I have that selected and just delete it. All right. So now for these, tab out and select these. These will have to meet up with uh, this tubing then. Go to the top view, go into the orthographic there, go into the wireframe, I don't need to. Hmm, I see a couple of things that could I could benefit from right now. What I'm going to do is select the wheels, go into the edit mode. I already had them selected, but since I am... Um, Paranoid, I will select them again and then P uh, separate by selection tab out go in here into this one and I don't think this one has the mirror modifier. It does not so I will uh, also make sure that It's a dumb habit if you see what I'm doing, which is deselecting But I do that because I've gotten to work on some files that sometimes are big and they'll have other objects out there that are outside your view. That's just a little hint I'm giving, so that's why I do this. And so, just to get into the habit of deselecting everything and then selecting it, even though you see it selected here, you don't know if outside your view, let's say if I was zoomed in and one of these was also selected, right? Um, and um, let's say, for example, that one's selected, and then I get in here and I start doing, you know, shift selections here that. I was not aware of. If I were to then do an operation on this right here, I would not be aware that that one over there is being operated on as well. That's why I, I got used to ever since working 2.7 to just um, delete that. I mean, clear the selection, not delete it. Clear the selection and then select what you want and P selection. It used to be a lot easier with just with the A. You toggle the A, now it's, you have to choose the Alt A. All right, I selected them, uh, I uh, separated them rather, and now I have them uh, such a way, I did that on purpose, because what I'm gonna do is uh, join them to this wheel. Ultimately, everything is gonna be joined as well. So then I can work on, I can operate on these a little bit better as a whole. 
and I'm going to try to just keep in the edit mode. I'm in the edit mode right now, you can see right here, but I have also the X mirror on. I have to be careful with that because I added it on and I've been moving objects back and forth, so some of this seems to get inherited. inherited. And right now, I just want to move it, and it does seem to respect that. Mm. I'll just work with it until it doesn't work anymore. Sometimes when you do some changes, minor changes, or things go in and out, in my experience, sometimes you find that for whatever reason, it just doesn't find the corresponding vertex that goes over here when it moves and does stuff. So that little wheel on top obviously is no good anymore. So what I'm going to do is just go link on that one and then link on this one, X vertices. I don't want it. And now what I can do is manipulate these individually. And hopefully it's going to apply, uh, since I'm manipulating them individually, it will mirror across as I'm working with these. So all I'm doing is just dragging them up until they touch. Or clip a little bit, Boop, right there. So that seems to work. Let me go into the solid view. So now that seems to be a little bit more and they need to be facing forward like that. They cannot be facing in the angle of the tubing because otherwise you'd have two wheels that are like this, um, misaligned and just wearing against the pavement. Um, let me see. I'm going to tab out, control zero, tab back in and go into the vertex selection and or rather maybe just the face three select that one face right there and drag that one up there's no point for that one being a little curved down little curvatures here and there so will give it re gives a realism but there's no point in having that i'm going to leave these the way they are because they give a little bit of of a an impression that this has been metal metal that has been shaped you know by either stamping or some some force and it's not uniform. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And that's that's good enough for me. Control save all day. So those are fixed and these are not. These will swivel. And so this is good for the cage. Now to get into the cage part part of this, I'm gonna center the cursor again. Well first I'm gonna take these I suppose I'll just join them all to the wheels now. Control join. I will separate them as I need to separate them. I wonder if I can join them even to the frame. I'll keep them separated for now. The wheels I mean, but for now, control join. I'm going to join that plate to the frame and that's, that way I have the wheels, the tubing, which is the frame, and now I'm going to work on the cage, the cage that makes the basket. There's another plate that I need to put in here somewhere to hold, but first I'm going to put the basket and then see how I can bring in the plate and make it work. All right, so I'm going to add a mesh, and it's going to be a cube, simple cube. Uh, keep it like that. Everything now has an origin on the zero, both all of these uh, objects. I will change the origin when I'm done to where I think it needs to be. It's the best origin. If you ask me, just thinking out loud, the best origin will probably be at the very center of these of this axis for these wheels um, for the entire model I think maybe I think perhaps that would be the best place to have an origin that way on an object scale it'll be rotating around the pivot point of those wheels uh, on the object scale uh, uh, object mode rather but that'll happen at the very end and then I'll scale it down to where I need it to be I think all right, with this uh, cube selected here, I'm going to just, um, I'm going to put my cursor right around. Well, grab everything number one, grab in the Y, and bring it to around. I think right there is fine, maybe a little more. Go to the top. I'm just going to eyeball it by putting the cursor there. And then off the pivot point from the cursor, I'm going to scale in the Y. And then just bring it up, scale Y, some more. 
Um, let me look at my references here for a second. And they seem, there's a couple of things that, you know, aesthetically I could choose to do. Like, for example, this one has a tubing that dives down. Mm, that's just an aesthetic thing if I wanted to. Where's my cursor? Every time I bring the pen to the pad, it takes my cursor away from where the other screens. So this one does not. I'm going to stick with the one that does not. This one does. Um, this one does more. So, you know, dive down. This one does a little bit. Back and forth. I think this is the same image as the one I'm seeing up here. I may have come across it twice and downloaded it twice. And this one does not. This is an actual image of a of a cart. For all I know, these could be models, just the same as mine. Who knows? Um, all right, because these are from the vendor. Um, either that, or it's an actual picture in a studio and then photoshopped. But this is looks like somebody snapped a picture of a cart in real life. All right. Let's do it. What I was doing at all of these, as I'm talking about this as well, is I don't think from this, this one does, that the cart, the um, the actual um, basket itself, comes all the way to the front. It doesn't appear in this one. If I were to just drop a line, it, it well, it, it kind of does. If I were to drop a line, kind of, but not really. But for my my cart, it will it will go all the way. Why not? We want room for groceries. Scale Y. All the way. Maybe scale. I'm gonna try scale Y. Just a tiny bit under. Yeah, right there. The reason I'm considering this is because the corner of the cart then is going to stick out because the cart corners uh, I'm not showing the screen I didn't do much other than scale it up I was in the top view it could be seen in a little tiny window and then kept on going up to here but anyway in the top in the corners in the corners here um, they're sharper than the corners rounding on the bottom or they're going to be sharper at least in mine in my uh, cart somewhat sharper the cage all right that's good enough i think scale in the x and that's what i mean the corner is going to stick out just a tiny bit so i'm wondering if i want to or I want to change the rounding on the corners on the tubing i'm just estimating where that's going to be now i'm going to choose that face right there in the top part then i'm going to scale it in the X and I'm just gonna make it meet the tubing somewhere so I have to what I'm shooting for is this tubing right here so now back into the references here the the um, there seems to be obviously their their meshes are welded they're somehow machine the machine probably there's a machine probably that does this welds these cages automatically or whatever but there's going to be a wire frame cage on the outside, and that appears to be these horizontal ones. They come like this and go around. So this would be the outermost, you know, loop of wire. And it appears to be welded here. Because um, if you zoom in and you think what kind of attachment you could have there, you know, you could either weld them to a plate and then have that plate bolted onto that tube. Uh, on this one, they seem to run right into the tube right here. And there's another structural element right here that seems to be attaching them. But it's perfectly valid to say that the cage here, these are welded onto this tube right here. Um, they don't appear to go in. They appear to go on the side. This one does too. Anyways, the outermost cage is the one that comes horizontally like this. And but it still respects the inside of the cage um, of the tubing, which is going to be here. Now that, for the most part, is vertical. So I just got to get close. And I think it clips a little bit. 
So it's too close. Scale X. I'm going to bring it down. And as I do this, I'm going to I'm going to give you a little spoiler here, scale X. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box that's the shape of the basket. And then I'm going to start extruding, uh, or rather, uh, extracting or se separating loops from there that are going to be the shape of the basket and then offsetting them so that they'll be the thickness of a tube. And then I'll create the little tubes the same way that I did the tubing. That sums up what I'm going to do here in the next amount of time. So let me go into the front view here. Um, what I need now is go to edge selection, select that edge. And, um, well, no, this is the bottom of the basket. So I'll probably go into the face selection, select that face, and then just grab it in the Z and bring it down to where I think it's going to have to rest on top of, um, on top of the uh, frame there. And I'll leave some room because right now there's going to have to be, you know, a couple of, I'm not sure my fingers are visible. Let me see if I can show this. Basically, you're going to have some, you know, one wire, another wire on top of another one, and on top of another one doing something like this. So that's what I'm doing. All right. Um, and I'm eyeballing it. And if I get it wrong, I'm going to have to go back and rework it. So go back to the edge selection, select that edge. And then that basket, um, the basket itself, goes only up to, I would say, this is, I'm in America, so a, a couple of inches, a couple of inches there from where it bends over. So I'm going to eyeball that as well. And grab it to about there. That works. Grab that edge, go in the side view, and then grab that one to about there. All right, I'm gonna grab it just a tiny bit more, just so that it looks parallel. I'm doing that because I don't wanna uh, be a drag if I have to. I, I will end up manipulating those tubes ultimately one by one, not one by one, but you know, little tweaks here and there and you know it would kind of suck if you had to do a lot of that so I'm trying to get as close as I can without being too uh, too far off there's a little difference here um, and I'm not sure how I ended up with that and I think maybe the proportional editing that I did earlier um, this, if I were to look in the front view, these are clipping here, whereas they're not over here, and this is perfectly vertical, meaning the tubing here is not perfectly vertical, for whatever reason. Don't know how that came up, but I'm not going to scale in the X. I am scaling uh, off, no, off the cursor, I don't want it. I want it off the medium point scale in the X. And I'm going to just scale it in until I get the graphically correct. I'm going to focus on one side. I'm going to ultimately mirror this to make sure because I've been scaling off the off of the uh, cursor too. So there's some stuff that might be off. So I'll focus on this side here and then make it work. And just eyeball it so it has the same gap. Then I have a gap over here. That seems to work comes out that's a pretty long cart all right yeah I made one of the full shopping carts instead of the tiny short ones that you see on the image stuff that I can still fix if I wanted to but I don't I like the way it looks already in terms of shape if I go into the perspective it looks like a big full shopping cart a little longer than most maybe I'll shorten it maybe not Why not? In my mall, everybody shops big. All right. I'm going to go into the wireframe here. Vertex selection. Select these. Now I'm just going to eyeball these to where I think. Oh, I'm selecting. See, that's what I mean. See, I did, just did a vertex selection with a circle, and I had these 
Alt A. Well, imagine if that were somewhere off the view. I would have moved it without even knowing. They slope down on purpose, and the reason that they slope down is because they get stacked one inside of the other. The carts do, I mean. So their design is made so that you can take another cart and they'll, they'll stab so far. So for example, uh, that's why they slope down. Otherwise, I'm sure they'd be flush. And if I wanted to take some of these and put them into a row, I want to make sure that it works correctly, um, that, that they don't clip terribly. So I'm, I'm just eyeballing it and using the grid and just thinking, if I were to take another card and shove it in here, you know, how far would it go? And obviously the limiting factor is this one right here. So I think that angle right there gives me plenty of room. All right, control save. That's the cube, or the box shape, that is going to make the cage. Now I need to get a visual um, um, representation of what is actually seen. I can count them, but I'm not going to. I was going to go to the reference here, image. I'll go myself here and just look at this for a second. And I just got to make it visually look somewhat correct. It's looking, right now I'm actually changing my mind. Let me go back into the perspective. It's looking like it's a big cart in this y-axis. And so I may want to fix that. I may, may not. Let me see. How would I fix that too? Because it's not just a simple scale. If I were to scale in the y, obviously the tubing that's already somewhat giving me an impression that it's round tubing that's been bent into these shapes um, will flatten. And so once it flattens, then I may be able to get away from it, may not. And that's just a simple, not only that, the if I just scale it in the Y, this uh, front here is going to, or these angles from the top view are going to get narrower and I don't want that. If anything, if I were to bring them up over here, they would get um, they would get uh, object mode. Take that one. Uh, the front would get a little fatter. Not not fatter. It would be basically like cutting a cross section off this top part over here, meaning it'll actually be a little more open. All right. What I'm going to do is shorten it. It adds a little bit of time to what I'm doing here, but it just illustrates to me, I mean, I think control X, I would appreciate if somebody was teaching me how to fix certain things. All right. I'm going to scale them in. I'm going to bring those in. I can do two things. I can eyeball it and just grab it and bring it up like this, but you know what I'm going to do instead? Since I believe that maybe that face right there has a, I'm going to leave it as just face. I just created a transform orientation off that face with control plus, plus, plus. And oh, wait, this one still has the mirror modifier. Okay, good. Um, yes, head modifier. Here's a mirror. Okay, which is fine. I just deleted that loop and now I'm taking it back. In case you're wondering, the reason that that cursor when I was moving it up there is because it's way out there in the view. And so you're moving at very little distance by the amount of transformation that you're doing along your view plane, I believe. So sometimes it's easier just to snap it, since I'm doing the manipulations off the cursor, to snap it to what you're working on. And for me, I like to use that manipulator off the cursor because it lets you see what you're doing without being right on top of it with your hand or it used to be, you know, just on top of it visually with the manipulator. Some people like to use the tools that are over here. But um, like, for example, if I were to hit those tools, 
they just clutter to me. They get in the way, especially when you're working here like this. And I'm trying to work with stuff and I'm trying to see it and artistically I want to. I'm using loose. I'm using the term artistic very loosely, but you know, trying to get an idea where things are proportionally and with stuff that's cluttering, I sometimes don't want to see it. So I keep it like this and I use this tool right here. This manipulator gizmo and then I use the cursor when I'm off the cursor, 3D cursor, because otherwise you'd be off the medium point over here. Also in the way. I just brought it back a little bit just to give myself some room. Now what I need is, I don't need that face anymore, uh, transform orientation. What I'm going to do is select this one and then do a face. There's a face in there, believe me. And then do a transform orientation off of that face, but it's going to be a throwaway too. So now I'm going to go X and delete that face. There's a face that was selected when I generated, now I deleted it. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lose three loops. One, two, and three. I'm going to lose those. X, uh, edges, control Z. Control X, rather. Lose the loops. Now, select um, in the, I wonder, is the music low enough? I want to make sure. Okay, Alt A, and then do a circle select. I can do a box select. I always, and it's already set up for box select. I don't know. Oh, but it selects this here. Shift L to deselect that. All right, got it. And here's my transform orientation. I will, I see a loop in here for what? What is that? Oh. I think I'm seeing the result or something. I already have the optimal display and I want that. Okay, there we go. That's what I was seeing. <laughs> um, it happens. Okay, tab out, control zero, tab in. My computer started to hum even after I did that because, all right. So, because working with the modifier and it's full glory it's taxing on the computer so there i brought it back some now it's going to become a small shopping cart i guess maybe maybe the town where i have this shopping cart does not have that many people <laughs> oh wow so now i was expecting that to go right along that face that i created and for whatever reason it did not control z let's do it again i did create a face and what I'm seeing there is an artifact of that loop, not, this is part of what I was saying earlier. What happened is that I cut those loops, I get an idea now, I cut those loops there um, off of uh, the loops that were generated after doing the bend. So I'm not sure if you, you'd have to see the first video, but in the first video I just used points that I turned into a curve. But what I'm saying is when you turn into a curve, you don't get a perfect uh, perpendicular, you know, loop perpendicular to this tube. You just don't uh, because um, because of the way that it works. That's just the way that the, the computer works. So it's not a, this itself is not a perfect circle. So if you can imagine, I start scaling them back and forth. They're not going to be perfect uh, tubes, circular tubes. Um, and so even though I used a loop there to generate a face it's normal or it's I mean, z-axis that you see right there was not in line with this uh, tube what is in line is i'm going to take that edge right there one an edge let's say for example i just picked an edge random edge it's the one that's on the inside but it's the one it works fine that edge is in line maybe i'll take the top one i'll take the tp top one just for giggles I'll say that one, tippy top edge, is, it's not even the tippy top edge, it's, uh, it's off to the right, but I'm going to say that one is more in line with the tubing here, and then I'll go back over here, delete that one, and add that one. 
that gave me another transform orientation. You can see here it's the Y along this tubing right here. All right, now I can use that instead. If I wanted, and so you notice that this is all crazy like this, and if I wanted to generate a face, if for this is for anybody that would be considering that, if I really wanted to generate a face that gave me actual coordinates, because these X and these X and the Z coordinates, they're all wherever the computer decides it, right? If I wanted to, what I would do is I create a plane here or use one of these loops, and I'd scale it along the Y to zero, and then create a making sure that obviously the top and the bottom are flat, and then create another face off of that, and that would give me the coordinates if I absolutely needed to. I'm just talking. Hope that makes sense to somebody. I'm just letting, since I get into, I can explain too much. Maybe I should just get to do it. Alt A, um, go into the um, vertex selection, and then shift link to get rid of that one. And now we're gonna look at it from the top, see how it behaves. Now it seems to do it correctly. Probably gonna go, I went too far last time. I'm gonna leave it right there right there, and then I'll just select that loop and go G, G, double G, just so that it doesn't stretch so much here. Doesn't matter, it's not really gonna affect it. All right, now I'll tab in, Alt A, link, top view, and now I'm done with that one. Mm, you know, I think maybe I could have also used this cart side, even though it's not a given considering that some stuff moved when I was doing. So I'm not going to do that. But um, I'm going back to the global. And then just moving it to where it needs to be. Well, the cards seem to have a tube that bends down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, since, since I can. I'm going to put the play right back over here. And I'm going to scale X. Um, because of the modifier, so rather just box select it, shift link, uh, or rather just link this, undo the selection there, I don't think that matters. Oh, what happened? You know what happened? Do I have the weld? I do not have the weld all day. If I link this, I should not have that. That's the mirror modifier, control Z, doing its stuff, doing its thing. I wonder if I have, I have a full plate that's on the mirror modifier and that's what's happening. So I need to basically select that X, V, because I joined it and it wasn't originally part of it. I gotta make sure there's no face in there and there isn't. Um, also, I got to make sure that those are welded, and they are. Now we link. Now I can move it out to where it should be, right there. And then maybe center these a little bit. I'll be moving those around when I create. I don't think I need to create a hole for this. Never mind. There's no need to create a hole. So now, Alt A. Now I'm going to link, 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 link. So I got everything there from the top view. I'm just gonna eyeball it and grab it. And that's not a mirror modifier, that's just working because it's got the, I think the bolt, the nut needs to be somewhere around there. I hit control instead of shift. I was trying to do the minor adjustments. Tab out. Now it's a tiny cart. Tab out, grab that one, and then just go GG and bring it back. Oh, never mind. I'll just scale it to where I need to be. So go to the top view again, and then just bring it down. Since it's a tiny cart, I'm gonna leave it really flush then. And then scale X off of the medium point, scale X. Uh, 
I'm going to make it wider then because we lost a lot of room in that cart, huh? So I'm looking at this side. Really. Go like this. I think I have the vertex selection there. Select these X, V. Add the mirror modifier. And the X, and there it is. Select these. Make sure the clipping is on and put it there. And that's just because then I just work on half. And I made sure that now whatever manipulations I did, they may have gotten the shape out of being uniform and, and uh, symmetrical. Now I'm making sure that they are. Okay, this looks a little bit more like the reference image. Now if I were to hold it like this, maybe it's a little wide here on the bottom. I'm looking at the reference image myself but it's a little closer the what i had previously was a little too long okay control save <laughs> so much so much science for a shopping cart right but that's the way they were done so i'm gonna take that corner and bevel it bevel it right now on this content this uh, condition control b and i'm gonna give it about two i think maybe i should look from the top in the wireframe, control B. Mm. There, that way it goes around. It's not that sharp. Well, they're sharp. The corners are sharp. There. Control save. Okay, now I'm going to go control R and I want to pick there. I got the edge. Now I'm just going to scroll that up on the wheel until it visually looks the distance that it should be in terms of the cuts. Oh, I made myself, I ran myself into a problem just by doing this. Mm. Well, control save. I can always go back and do this. I'm going to apply the modifier. Tab out, apply, tab back in, control R. No, oh, um, okay, I can. because of the bevel, that's why I won't do it. Control Z. Making sure I got the mirror back on. I thought it was, I thought it was because of the mirror, but no, it's because of the bevel. All right. I want to do the knife. I'm going to be cutting through this thing and I have to see for constraint. And then enter. All right, that does that. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here, but this is going to be an eyeball. And this may mean that I will. I'll just have to guess. There. And maybe move some of this stuff around later on. Okay. The reason I did that is because then now I can actually cut these the way I want to. There. Now I got to make sure that they're visually about the same density of the mesh as what I see. I think that's about it. I'm not counting anything. I'm going to keep it. Then I also have to consider the thickness of the tubes that I'm going to ger generate from them. So consider those. Enter. I'm scaling or doing something. I don't know. And then deselect. I'm going to go into the edge selection because it makes it easier to see. So I've got that, and now Control-R. 
and then look at that and it looks kind of squarish kind of dense and that looks close enough enter what's going on oh i moved them control z that's what i did Come on. I think that works. Escape. So what I do is I try to, uh, you know, move around and then I realize I went one too many. Control Z. Right there. All right. It's still a little dense, a little dense. Control save. Hmm. I don't think I need to save this necessarily, but I will as soon as I cut these. These are the horizontal ones, and then it doesn't have that many on this. Mm, they don't have that many. They have about this many. One, two, three, four. I can count those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, it'll be there. Okay. Alt A. Tab out. Duplicate it and then move it to collection three. Select this one and rename it um, basket. Just so that I know. What it is, and then I'm going to be extruding, uh, not extruding, um, extracting things from here that are going to make the basket. So here, let me go ahead and select the loop, and I can go down selecting all the loops. I think, yeah, that that probably be it. Right? I'm going to try something right now. I always try these things to see if they'll work, but I'm going to say. Um, Shoe similar with direction, but see, then it selects stuff that makes it in and stuff that doesn't make it in. So, eh. All right, I'll just have to do the work. And these are the ones. Well, you know what? It's going to be a problem me deleting some of these. So I'm going to go into the face selection, select that face, shift G, and I'm going to select the normal on those. X faces because there's nothing on there on the top that I really want to retain and now I'm going to go in the edge selection and I was using shift and alt and then just selecting all of these is there one more loop in there Oh, I forgot. I forgot something. Okay. Not only that, I'm out of order. I am completely out of order on what I'm doing. In this case, I'm going to select these loops. I'm going to go into the wireframe so I can see them. And what I forgot is the bevel of these loops right here. Why not? I'll choose that one. See how it behaves. And so the bevel is going to do the rounding. That's what that bevel is for. So I did that on purpose because I'm going to extract the loops, but I don't want to have to go and select every vertex and, re and undo it. I can. It's just more work. So control B. And this one has also two. It's kind of sharp too, the bends. So I'll leave them nice and sharp down there all right so that works better now here's what I meant I think I went out of order I was trying to show an illustrate earlier with my finger so the first one that's on the outermost edge is these these that run like that this one's a little low but I can bring it up 
um, and then the very top one and the very top one and the ones that are low what I just realized is that I also don't need these faces over here I just realized that as well uh, I only need the front and the bottom so control save I'm going to go back into the face selection, select that one, and go Shift G, and then a normal. And Shift select that one, and then I think it's Shift and Control. This one. Oh, Shift select that one, and Shift and Control because of the mirror modifier. And this one. Okay, X face. I don't need that as well. That leaves me with these points right here. Or rather, let me hit in the edge selection. Leaves me with those points that need to come out a little bit. Yeah, this is all flat down here, so I can just drag those and bring them out to about there. Well, I'll keep them where the tube is. Control save. All right, now back to what I was doing. I noticed, I just noticed, um, I didn't just notice it. I mean, I'm I'm seeing it. I'm noticing it more. I wasn't going to do it, but the rail on the top. So, um, let me go ahead and show this. This one is not. That's why I wasn't going to show it. But so this this loop on the bottom is close to the bottom, which I've already got it there, which is fine. But this one has two closer to the top, probably to give it more stability near the top where the cage itself could be loose. This one is thicker on the top even, it seems to be plastic covered, probably for people are not to get hurt, but there's two close to the top. So I think that gives it, it makes it more rigid along this rail here, I think. That's what the purpose of that is for. So what I need to do is do that. So I have it here, I'm gonna go GG and grab it up so it's closer and then take this one and I'll have to eyeball it to be centered. I'm using G, G as well. G, G. And G, G. I'm going to take that one there. Uh, no. I'm going to leave that one alone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another one. And I'll put that one near there. Okay, so, okay, back to what I need. I need that one. I need those right there. Those edges selected in the edge selection mode, I'm going to duplicate them. P selection. So I duplicated and I separated the selection. Tab out. So I have it right there. I'm going to apply the mirror modifier on that one so that they're nice and uniform going around there and as it is right now. I'm going to take that basket there and hide it for a second while I get to visualize these right here. Control save. Okay, so that works. I'm going to go ahead and I already have my quick favorites and convert a curve from this mesh. So if I go down here to these properties over here in the geometry and the bevel, I get to, it was 0.1 for the tube, right? So I'm going to say half of that. 0 0.05 it's a little thick 0 0.025 deselect it and look at it now it's a little thin so I'm going to say 0 0.035 visually that looks good to me right there and that's what I left the distance there for for this 
I think that works. Not everything is perfect, so I can always make those work. Control save. Oh, I did I did control Z. Um, 0 0.035. Control save. So there's that basket aspect of the basket, which is fine. Now I'm gonna take these W shade smooth to begin with. Take these in um, Alt H rather. Take those. Hide them for a second. Go back to this one. Now I want the ones that come next. I don't think it matters. Like if there's okay, the ones that come next in this one are the ones that go sideways. Maybe so that they. I don't know. I don't think it matters. All right. So I get to select. Yeah, I think I want that one. I can move it. I've got them. Make sure they go all the way over there. Yes, Shift, Duplicate, P, Selection, Tab Out, select those, Q, um, Curve, it's a 3D already and it's full, and then in the depth, this one will be 0 0.025. All right. I think that works. Now, Alt H, what I'm going to do is take that one and that one, Shift H, and just look at these individually. What I'm going to do is select this one. I applied the mirror modifier. I forgot to apply the mirror modifier, but it did that for me already. What I'm going to do is go into the edit mode. And, oh well. I just realized I probably should have done something for these vertices here to dissolve these vertices. And I wonder if I can do them now uh, or do I want to? I really don't then. I'm going to look into the side view here, deselect everything, go into the wireframe and then select only this one. Make sure I had them all and then go control X to dissolve only that one. I'll leave that as it is right there then. And I'll box select these. I don't want those. And move them over. In the solid view, I get to see their work right there. Control save. That works. Tab out. Now I get to do the other ones. Alt H. So take the take the two wires here. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move them temporarily to a new collection for leave that for that right there. And then I'm gonna hit one when I want to hide them. All right, so now I need the side ones, and I will take that one there. How many are counting? I'm counting. 17, 18, 19, 20. Right? 20, 21. Right? Maybe I miscounted. I already did not get some of these. For whatever reason, I didn't get these. Let me see, let me hit that again. Maybe I just really, I relaxed on the uh, control button a little bit. I don't know why I didn't select them to begin with. Those are usually cues for me that maybe there's something might be wrong with the geometry, but I can check that right now. Okay, shift, um, duplicate, P selection. Tab out. 
select those, shift H. I started playing stuff. Um, apply this. It's going to get done anyways when I do it, but okay. And Q convert mesh. Convert to mesh. Gives me options here to keep original. <laughs> it gives me the option to keep the original. Don't really want the original. All right. Go into the curve selection stuff over here. Um, and this one was also 0 0.025. Multi. All right, move it to collection four and then hit four. Mm -hmm. That hasn't always worked. Move it to collection four. Better to click it here than to actually hit, hit the four. You noticed I hit the four twice, but there's a little. See, see when you hit, uh, when you do move function and you hit one of these keys, the master collection, the main, main collection is one. I don't know why that that's just the way it is and you have to get used to it some people would call it a bug and, and report a bug for me it's just get used to it it's the software it's the software that it is Z oh I'm not in the edit mode that's why uh, so select them again go into the edit mode go into the front view see how it's skewed there that doesn't allow me to move these. So I can either eyeball it like this, which works fine, or I can go to the front view and then just use the arrow keys. But the preference, the set preference that is set there is not fine enough to do this little movement here. So what I'm trying to do is select those right there. Control invert. I want those in there. Control X. Get rid of them. Because now I need to move them over all in the front view again or rather right there. I need to move all of these. Um, I actually need to mirror this movement. Um, this movement needs to be mirrored a little bit and I'm not sure that... Um, is there a function here? No. There's functions for the Bezier curve, but... Hmm, will be the best way. If I were to do a scale, it wouldn't work either. So the best way to do it is to keep track of the number, at least the one that I know. Excuse me one second. All right. Um, let me just move them like that, eyeball it, use the control there. I forgot, maybe I should have kept them clipping a little bit, which I'm going to do right now. Clip just a tiny bit. I'll explain why. Some of these maybe, if they don't clip tiny bit it may not look visually correct so here while I'm zoomed in right around there not only that I'm gonna lose some of the curvature when I do the subdivision that's because I was holding the shift before I hit that so I'm gonna leave it right there all right Okay, so what I'm going to do here is keep track of this, this is 0 0.00065. So I'm going to type that in 0 0.000, the movement that I just did. Make sure that that's what I actually moved. And now here, deselect everything and do a box select for these. Nope, can't do that. Circle select. For those, control X. And I'll take that and now move it. Negative point one two three sixty five. 
Why didn't that work? Excuse me. Why didn't that work? I think that should have worked. Yeah, that's a little odd. I wonder why. Um, maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I'm gonna have to eyeball this then. Doesn't matter. If I want a perfect symmetry, I can fix it after I turn them back. There. Tab out. All right, so that's the cage. It seems to work except for the bottom. Okay, so that's what I need. I need these on top. Let me go. Let me go into the local mode for now, while I select these all day. What I'm going to do is, um, I need to get rid of these. And these. All right. Now I'm going to select these, get out of the local mode, go to the front view, go to the wireframe because that's the only way I'm actually going to see it, and then grab these. And these are above. Um, need to be above the the other ones right around there I'm just panning around now W shade smooth W shade smooth didn't have it selected Okay. I am in object mode, one, alt H. Didn't have everything selected. So I'm gonna move that one now to the third collection. And the fourth collection. I should now have something that resembles the cage, resembles the cage of a shopping cart. Control save. All right, so it's an hour into this whole thing right now. Um, there's a process. This is the one that, for me, is the one that's most bothersome. <laughs> there is the things that I need to put on the bottom. And there's, in other words, let me show. Because um, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to do this. I think this covers the modeling session for how I go about getting this modeled. It's already good enough for me. What I need to model is the plate, uh, which I've done already um, uh, over here. Similar way, I will do it over here. And I need to model the other cage elements that cover the back over here. Now for that, I need to look at the references and then work on those. I could do those in another hour. I think I've already recorded this for one hour. I can do those in another hour. There's other stuff that might, well, maybe like curving this out, curving these out is not hard. I just take the vertices and curve them out. Uh, modeling this is not hard. You just copy some of the tubing and then, you know, solidify it, all these kinds of things. Um, I think that it's pretty much, I thought maybe I'd share this because, I mean, it's a simple way of modeling a cage that, it looks like I may have spent a lot of time trying to figure this out, but I didn't. Um, and I'm going to leave it with that right here like this. I will obviously in the thumbnail spend some time before I upload this to show the finished product in the thumbnail. But basically model the plate the same way that I did this plate over here. That um, So model these plates right here, I mean, 
the same way that I did the plate on the bottom. Model these uh, uh, wire elements, cage elements, in the same similar fashion that I did these, but they're going to require a little bit more um, thought, forethought when I'm doing these in mine. It, 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 so a little bit more forethought of where I create the um, mesh that I'm going to extract the loops from. And that takes time. I could do it in another hour. Oh, uh, how about this? Maybe I'll just, because I'm going to go forward and do this. Please, in the comments, leave uh, a comment saying, I would like to see the video where you model the remainder of this object. And for that purpose, what I will do from now on, because um, edit, you know, editing this stuff takes time, what I will do is, as I go forward and finish this model, I will time lapse it. And then if you'd like to see it, I'll add it as a time lapse after the fact. If I see anybody that comments on this video saying, I would like to see how you modeled the rest. So for now, I can just do the control link materials and then I can view it as it, what it will look like, the cage there, it's floating in the air. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention here before I wrap it up, completely wrap it up, is that maybe somebody can help me out if they know of a way. I will be turning these into a mesh element, so I will do this for now just to illustrate this. I will, um, I will convert this into a mesh. Once it's converted into a mesh and it's working the way I want to, right now there's no real reason to turn this mesh into a um, subdivided mesh. There really isn't. I say I was saying I was going to do that, but if you really want it to look nice and smooth, you can do that. Uh, but it's looking smooth enough now for just the visual clutter. And if you really zoomed up, it'd be better to do that. But it just takes your computing power. But here's what I was going to ask is that what I do have to do is go and fill every one of those and bevel them a tiny bit. And I'll have to do that for every one of these. So that just takes time. And I'm not going to record that, but that shows how I basically finish that. And if I need to extend them out, I would use the same process that I just showed, which is either taking a line element there and then just extruding them out but I do that on mass. In this case, you can't because they have different angles. But the same process, all of it already covered in these videos. And uh, I will leave it like that then um, and call it good right here. So with that said, thank you for watching. Like I said, leave a comment if you'd like to see me finish the rest of this, which I will move forward now to do, and I will time lapse it. So what I can offer is I'll just show a time lapse where I put the rest of the stuff in. All right. Well, with that said, thank you for watching and goodbye. <laughs> I forgot I wasn't even showing. Uh, I forgot I wasn't even showing what I was doing. Let me go over it. B4, <laughs> because I'm not going to redo this part. All right. I basically turned the curves into a mesh and then added a face here. And I'll do it again right here. Take that and then basically make a face and then bevel it a tiny bit. If anybody knows how to get these, there might be an option when you convert, I don't know, or, or an option in the, in the, there is, I think, an option in the curve to give you a, um, a, um, let's try it. Ah, I've almost wrapped it up, but there's probably an option here to fill the caps here, but it's black. Why is it blacked out? Oh, that's interesting. So here I am on this one. I'm joining the materials, control link, materials. But for example, this one, it's still a curve and it has the fill caps option darkened out. I don't know why. I can toggle it, but it's dark. And then here I can go um, mesh from curve. 
and I get nothing. <laughs> anyway, I could use some help with that. Otherwise, I'm just going to fill those in. Okay, well, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye. Put it like that. Goodbye.